guys, ya sabes que Carlos Seis Pate to another episode of Nature's Dishes. Today we're making tarta mespanaki ketiri. That translates to a tart made with spinach and cheese. So delicious. I mean, if you serve this, if you call some friends over for brunch and you put this out with a nice salad, that is all you need. It is finger looking good, amazing, so flavorful. Very easy to make, simple ingredients. If you follow me, if you've been following along with me, you might have all of these on hand because I usually cook with them and most of my recipes have them. Let's get started. We're gonna start off with half of a large onion. Uh, if you have a small onion, you could use a small onion, the whole thing. Um, or one or two leeks are really good in this recipe too. But this is what I have on hand and a, a big proponent of cooking with what you already have. No need to run to the supermarket to get special ingredients, especially if it's just one ingredient. But if you do have leeks, this would be a fabulous place to use them. Go ahead and finely chop the onion. That looks good enough to me. And go ahead and add the onion to a saucepan that's heating over medium heat. We're gonna season the onion with a little pinch of salt. I like to season each step of the way. That way the food has so much flavor. A little bit of salt is all you need. And then we're gonna add three, four tablespoons of olive oil. Get it in one single layer. And this is gonna cook until the onions are nice and soft, about eight minutes or so. Okay, the onions are ready. I have two scallions that I thinly slice all the way down to the white parts. And then I just dunked them in cool water and lifted them out and strained them in the strainer. These are gonna go in and just soften just for a few seconds, really, or a minute or two. <laughs> seconds, minute or two, <laughs> big difference. But basically, you just want them to soften up a little bit. Okay, the onions and scallions are ready. I have a pound of spinach that I've roughly chopped, and I'm gonna add it to the pan, and I increase the heat to medium high right now because I really want the spinach to cook down and release the um, water and the liquids that it has in it and sort of dry it up a little bit. So I'm gonna add the spinach in probably three or four batches. Each time one batch wilts down, I'm gonna add the next. And then I'm just gonna cook it down once the final batch is wilted for about two to three minutes, so that way most of the liquid can evaporate. And go ahead and season in between with salt and some freshly cracked black pepper. All right, so this is what it should look like when it's done. There's still gonna be some liquid left down there. You don't have to go too crazy trying to dry that up too much. Then over here, I have about a half a pound, not a pound, of feta cheese that I always buy in block form, and I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna crumble it into the spinach mixture. This is gonna help it cool down. And just mix everything up and give it a taste. And at this point, you can see if it needs a little bit more salt and pepper. It's perfect. You know what? I can eat this all on its own just like this, crack some eggs in here and call it breakfast. <laughs> but we're gonna save it for the tart. Okay, we're gonna put that aside so it can cool. Over here, I have a nine inch round tart pan. So tart pans basically have really pretty fluted edges and they have a removable bottom. If you don't have this, you can use a pie pan, that will work. Now I melted a stick of butter, which is four ounces. So I'm just gonna brush uh, the bottom of the pan with the butter, and this is salted butter. I do love using salted butter when I'm using it in savory dishes like this one. I feel like it has so much more flavor. And then over here I have thawed out phyllo. This is the regular phyllo that's used to make like baklava and things like that. It's not the country style thick phyllo and it's half a pound. And this particular company sells it in a pack, in, in a box with two packs. So each pack has half a pound of phyllo pastry in it. You're gonna, you're gonna find it, find phyllo in so many different ways, so many different lengths and sizes. So I will measure this so I can let you know how big this is. I usually buy the phyllo that's sold as a big roll, a one pound roll, but this time this is the one that they had in the supermarket. It is about 13 inches wide and eight and a half inches long. Okay, if that's of any help to you. Now we're gonna take one or two layers at a time, and we're gonna layer them in the tart pan. And we're gonna brush each layer with phyllo, not with phyllo, <laughs> with melted butter. Now we're not even gonna brush, we're gonna drizzle, forgetting my words here. And if they're stuck together, don't worry about it. And you're gonna go, just, you're gonna move them a little bit, like if the first one is horizontal, the next one can be vertical, and so on and so forth. And just keep going around in a circle, until you run out of phyllo. Try to get the butter all the way down to the edges too, because that's gonna be the crust. Okay, we have 
have all the phyllo sheets in here. While the, um, what is it called, the spinach filling is cooking a little bit more, we're going to make the last component, which is going to be the liquid component. So we're going to put two eggs in a mixing bowl, one and a quarter cups of half and half. I should have beat the eggs first. <laughs> Make sure you guys beat the eggs first. They're much easier to beat before the liquid is added. And I'm going to season it with a little pinch of salt, like I think quarter to half a teaspoon, some freshly cracked black pepper, and a little pinch of ground nutmeg, maybe an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon. I like as little nutmeg as possible in recipes where you just taste them in the background and kind of give a nice aroma to the dish, but when I have too much nutmeg in it, I just don't like it, so it's up to you. And this part is ready. Now we're gonna add the spinach filling to the center of the pastry. Then over here, I have some uh, freshly shredded mozzarella cheese. It's not the cheese of choice um, because it's so mild in flavor. I prefer maybe like a, a Gruyere cheese or even a Gouda cheese, something with a little bit more flavor, but this is what I had. And again, use what you have, use what you love. It's gonna add a really nice stringy component to the tart. It's just gonna taste so good. And just go ahead and put that on top of the spinach. I should have done this first, but put the tart pan onto a baking sheet and then pour the milk, the half and half an egg mixture over the spinach mixture and kind of move it around so that we can get all the way into the tart. And then you're gonna take all of the edges of the phyllo and you're gonna tuck them in to create a really nice crust. And the pan is important because it's gonna catch any um, spillage you know, from the, during baking, but also it makes it so much easier and safer to transfer the tart in and out of the oven, especially since the bottom of the tart pan is removable. You don't wanna to try to take this out without putting it on a baking sheet. You'll have a mess on your hand, you can get burned, you'll drop the tart. Now, the, with the remaining butter, just go ahead and brush the edges of the tart so they can get really nice and golden. So my oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It's gonna bake on the center rack of the oven for about 45 minutes or until it's nice and golden all around and on top and on the sides. One thing that I forgot to do, which I recommend, I forgot to make a note and when I don't make notes, I forget everything. Put a layer of breadcrumbs on, uh, on the bottom of the tart pan before you start layering in the phyllo because that's going to catch any of the juices that the pie is going to release and keep that bottom, um, bottom layer of dough, of pastry, nice and crispy. It will get a little, bit of, a little bit soggy if you don't put the breadcrumbs on the bottom. That's a nice tip that I'm going to write down so that way when you make it at home and you read the recipe, you won't forget. But I did forget. It's going to be fine because it's for the family. They're still going to love it. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it comes out. Boy, does it smell good around here. The tart was ready in 45 minutes. The thing about it is, though, you do have to let it cool for at least 15, 20 minutes. Otherwise, it's going to fall apart when you go to serve it. It does have to set a little bit. Then carefully, if you're using the tart pan, then you're going to want to remove it or separate it from the tart pan using a butter knife because sometimes it tends to get stuck if some of the, um, the milk and the cream seeps out to the sides with the cheese, it sticks to the pan. So just loosen it up and then carefully take it out, put it on a cutting board, on a serving dish, whatever your heart desires, and serve it as is. A nice salad goes, a nice green salad made with some watercress or arugula goes so good with this. Maybe some figs, balsamic vinaigrette. I have a really good recipe for a roca salata, which is one of my favorites. And I'll link that down below as well and put it on the blog post. Um, a tip about when you shred cheese at home, when you grate it on a, on a box grater, never wash the grater with hot water because it cooks the cheese on. Wash it with cold water and the cheese just pretty much slides off. That's a, that goes for anything. Anytime you're cooking with cheese and you have it baked onto a pan or if you have it on a plate, if you have a really cheesy dish, wash it with cold water. And then once the cheese is off, and of course you can you know, run, it, run it, do a hot rinse on top of that. But if you've ever had cheese cooked to your, um, to your dishes, it just keeps on cooking if you add hot water. So use cold. Anyway, that's my tip for the day. It is time for the taste test. I put it on a nice plate and it is ready for me. So creamy. The mozzarella cheese gave it like a pizza type flavor on top. I need some of this crust. You hear how crispy the side is? 
flaky and crispy. Because I didn't put the breadcrumbs on the bottom, the bottom crust did get a little bit soft. If you don't mind, you don't have to add the breadcrumbs. If you want it a little crispier, put the bre breadcrumbs on the bottom. They'll absorb all the moisture. The exact measurements are on the website, DemetriusDishes.com. Let me know what you guys think. If you make it, share pictures with me on Facebook and Instagram. I really love seeing your recreations. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.